Good afternoon, everybody. I am Jim T-Shirt, and you are watching my latest Carrera tutorial. This time, we're going to be talking about ambient occlusion in Carrera 7. Now, ambient occlusion is a very useful feature that can help you add some realism to a otherwise simple scene without murdering your rendering times. This is an oftentimes misunderstood feature, particularly by those coming from Poser to Carrera. So allow me to take a couple minutes and explain exactly what ambient occlusion is and why you would want to use it. Ambient occlusion in a nutshell can be looked at as being the opposite of lighting. If you think about how Carrera calculates lights in a scene, it basically will follow the light from a light source to a surface. Carrera will calculate shadows and so on and so forth. Ambient occlusion, on the other hand, when Carrera is using this option, Carrera will actually think about where the light is not going to be. So corners in a room, objects that are close in proximity to one another, ambient occlusion will actually darken the ambient light in those areas accordingly, hence the term ambient occlusion. Now to show this in action, I have set up this simple scene here in the assembly room. I have a poser set. I have a flat white sphere in the uh, in the middle of the room and I've got a single distant light coming through this window. The ambient scene light is turned up to 65 percent and I use this orangish pinkish, pinkish color to kind of fake indirect lighting. So let's do a quick test render see where we're at. And obviously this looks terrible. This looks very fake. There's virtually no shadows. The sphere appears to be floating above the floor when it's not. And this, like I said, looks just awful. This looks like something you'd find in the poser galleries. Now this is a perfect opportunity for ambient occlusion to add a little bit of contrast and realism to the scene without taking an hour to render like indirect lighting would. So first things first, to add ambient occlusion to a scene, Simply go over to your Global Illumination tab, check Indirect Light, and make sure Ambient Occlusion Only is checked. Now you have the option here of changing the occlusion radius. This works the same as the radius for the shadows in, in any Carrera light. The sharper you want the ambient occlusion effect to be, the lower the radius, the softer, the higher the radius. That's all there is to it. So for this scene, I'm going to try this at two feet. And I'm going to stop the recording because this will probably take a minute or two. OK, so here we are looking at our new render, this time with ambient occlusion. And it's very obvious that this looks much better, much more realistic. We've got some nice shadows in the corners here. We've got some nice shadowing underneath the sphere. None of this was here before. This is all ambient occlusion doing the, uh, the job for us. Rendering time here was a scant 29 seconds. You can't beat that, obviously. Even though it, it doesn't look as pretty as I'd like it to be, it's still a lot more realistic and much faster than using indirect lighting. At this point, to start making everything look, like I said, prettier, one option is to start cranking up your rendering settings, but that is going to obviously make everything take a lot longer. Another, and in my opinion, better option is to actually separate the ambient occlusion into its own pass and then composite everything together in Photoshop. Now, before you hit the stop button, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. To render in passes, where it says multi-pass here, just click add. And in this case, under lighting, I'm going to add ambient occlusion. <clears throat> this is actually going to, to save the ambient occlusion pass as a separate image. Secondly, let's change the file format to Photoshop. And I'm going to use an alpha channel and use the pre-multiplied alpha option. And this is going to allow me to add a different background to the, uh, to the final render in Photoshop. Not a necessary step, but I like to do it. Now once this is all set, simply render away and we will move over to Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop CS3. I've got my ambient occlusion pass opened up, as well as the original render without ambient occlusion. And to start compositing, I'm going to use the Move tool 
and drag the ambient occlusion pass on top of the original render. Let's maximize this and line everything up. Zoom into 100%. And to make this work, I'm going to change the blending mode of the ambient occlusion layer to multiply. And now everything's coming together. The multiply blending option is actually going to kill off the white and just address the black. So everything is coming together now. Now here is why it's better to do this in Photoshop than Carrera. We have some options available to us. I can change the opacity of the ambient occlusion layer if I don't want it as drastic. I can even come up to the filter menu and blur the ambient occlusion layer to kind of pretty it up a little bit. These are options that I did not have in Carrera. I can even use the erase tool to get rid of ambient occlusion in spots that I may not want it. We undo that. And I can even use the blur tool to pretty up uh, certain blocky, blotchy areas of the ambient occlusion pass that maybe didn't turn out as well as I wanted them to. And I'm just working on the ambient occlusion layer and not the background layer, so we're safe in that regards. And of course, stupid me, I forgot to uh, save a transparency pass. So to get the, uh, the background into the scene in a way that works, I'm going to need to actually get rid of part of the ambient occlusion pass. I'm going to use the magic wand tool here. And holding down the shift button, I'm just going to select these areas where the uh, checker pattern is showing. Control X to delete them. Now, for the finishing touch, I got this uh, pretty picture of uh, somebody's backyard. I'm going to drag that into the, uh, into the image. Adjust the layer so that it's in the, uh, in the, in the back now. I will use the, uh, the transform tool to kind of line up the perspective a little bit. And I can even apply a Gaussian blur to the background layer to uh, fake a little bit of depth of field. And that's all there is to it. Uh, this technique can be used for any pass, not just ambient occlusion. And it really gives you some options after the fact, which is uh, useful because it's easier to make adjustments to your render here than it is to actually go back into Carrera and re-render the entire scene. You know, particularly if you're using like indirect lighting or something where your render is taking hours to finish. Pretty cool trick, huh? So at any rate, this is just one way of going about working with ambient occlusion. There are plenty of other methods and approaches that I'm sure are as useful as this. But at any rate, I hope that you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions, my name is JT411. You can find me on renderosity.com. And thank you for watching.